you know what to set your ATM surcharge to? Set it in the video and I'm gonna give you some tips and tricks. All right, so you can tell that my voice is a little hoarse. Was at a music festival, singing and screaming probably all weekend long, so I lost my voice. But you know what? We're gonna continue on with the video, but so you guys can make fun of me later. All right, so point number one, gentlemen's clubs. This is my recommendation. When you get in a gentleman's club, what are you gonna set your surcharge to? Most gentlemen's clubs, from my observation and everything that I've seen, is they're set anywhere from five to ten dollars per transaction. Yes, five to ten dollars per transaction on a location, but you're gonna split that location surcharge 50-50 with the location owner. So if you do a ten dollar surcharge, that means you're making five dollars every transaction. Hi, this is Phil from PQ Merchant Enterprises, and we're here to just let you guys know that we sell ATMs. We also provide repairs on ATM dispensers, and we sell sell keypads just like this one and this one this is an 8000 r keypad and this one is a 6000 keypad we also repair these and do advanced replacements so for 175 dollars you give us your old keypad which is like this one and we'll give you a refurbished one so you can put it in your 1800 your 1500s your 1800 se's and some of the halo ones will also use this one and with this special we're also going to offer 50 dollars off for any new atm sales just mention the promo code 2023 and we'll take an additional $50 off our regular price of the ATM. Point number two, mobiles. Now, mobile event, this is what we're recommending. This is what I see for the last three, four years is surcharges are anywhere from $350 to $5, sometimes as much as $6 in a mobile event. Now, for you guys, if you're cutting them a commission, usually anywhere from 50 cents to a dollar on a mobile for a commission structure, and then you retain the rest of it. So, but most common is I'm seeing 4.95 with usually 50 cents or a dollar going to the venue, and then you're getting basically 3.95 or as much as 4.45. Sometimes you get all five dollars. If the venue doesn't have a lot of transactions, then you're going to make even more money per transaction. So five dollars is pretty much the norm right now across the country that I've seen in the mobile events. Point number three, seasonal event. Phil, what's a seasonal event? A seasonal event is basically like a pumpkin patch, a golf course, a ski resort, something that is not there permanent, but there is more than one month a year. So when we set a golf course, what we like to do is always set it about $350 to $4 per transaction. Now golf courses for us in basically a great state of Illinois, they do really well in May, June, July, August, and September. And then as you can figure out, March, they don't, they're not usually closed, but April and October, they're slower months. And then they're usually closed the rest of the time. But we still decide to put ATMs in golf courses. Some we leave there all season long. It means even in the winter, sometimes they have banquets, they have weddings, they have big parties. And then some they close, the golf course closes and they don't have anything. And those venues, we usually pull the ATMs out because they don't have any parties, but the other ones we leave in because of the parties. Point number four is tattoo place. Now tattoo place is a different venue than in all the other ones on all the other venues we usually just put a 200 dollars minimum maximum which means that's the most amount of money they can take out and it's a minimum requirement 200 dollars is the minimum requirement that you have to let customers take out at least 200 dollars and then we just keep it there we don't raise a banana tattoo place we usually raise it up to about four between four and five hundred depending on the venue and then what we do is we do a three dollar or 350 put that that surcharge and then or two percent whichever is greater so that means if they take out two hundred dollars and we type 200 times 2%, that's gonna be $4 versus if it was a $3 surcharge and they went to take $200 out. So it's it's $3 or 2%, whichever is greater, or depending on what you send the surcharge. So this doesn't work in a lot of other venues because it's usually the same people. In a tattoo place, those people are they're not regular customers. They come in, they get some work done, maybe they come back to, to fill it in a little or to get some color, but they're in and then they come back and then they're, they don't see them for six months a year. So if you put that in a convenience store where you get the same kind of customers, you're gonna get headaches, you can get people calling and complain. And at two places, they never complain because they're only there once or twice a year at, at most. And point number five, the standard pretty much throughout the country is between three and 350. That's pretty much what I see surcharges throughout the country in most average spots. Now again, some of the anomalies are the seasonal spots, the tattoo places, the gentlemen's clubs. Those are usually anomalies. They're higher than most average, but mostly average convenience store, gas station, liquor store, bar, restaurant. Those are, that's where they're at between three and 350 throughout the country. Now, if you get on the East Coast, you go downtown, New York, 
I see a lot of surcharges at a dollar, two dollars. That's not conducive. It's very hard to make money for, especially new guys coming into business in those neighborhoods. I don't recommend if you're, you know, to get into the business because it's very hard to make money in those neighborhoods, especially when you can't set the surcharge to where you want to be. But for the most part, the rest of the country, except for that little, well, it's not little, but New York and some of those areas. But for the most part, the rest of the country files suit with what we're talking about between three and three. All right, so if you're thinking about starting your own ATM business, I want to invite you to our free checklist entitled ATM Business Passive Income Checklist. The five things you need to know to start your profitable ATM business. So you can start earning passive income, make more money for your family, and spend more time with them also. If that sounds like something that's interesting to you, click the link down below and start your ATM journey today. Again, this is Phil from the ATM Mastermind Group page, where we buy your freedom at one transaction at a time. Thank you guys for making us number one on YouTube, and I'll see you over at the next ATM Mastermind video.